Hey guys. How is it going? Um, give me a second so I can change some stuff that I wait. Hola, hola. ¿Qué onda? ¿Cómo están? Uh, para este streaming voy a estar haciendo un Mickey, pero con mi propio estilo. <ríe> es un poco la idea. Uh, voy a empezar a usar primitivas, como siempre, para empezar a sacar las formas primarias. So, um, for tonight, I I'm planning to do my own version of Mickey Mouse, which is going to be a different take. I had this design in mind for for a time right now, especially because I did a previous version of this, like maybe four or five years ago. So, it's gonna be a, a nice exercise to go back to, to that design and maybe tweak some stuff that I had in mind. Yeah, it's going to be like a pretty quick stream, hopefully. But who, who knows, right? Um, hey, saludos allá hasta Perú, Lima. Oh, hi, Kim. All the way to Vietnam. Vietnam is one of those countries that I really want to visit one day. Hopefully, um, won't take me that long to, to visit the country. So yeah, um, the idea is to, to do like this. Not going to be like a fan art, because it's not going to be really a Mickey Mouse. It's going to be more like a like a tribute, like my own redesign of, of the character. So it's going to be kind of creepy. I mean, not, not entirely, but um, yeah. If you follow my streams, you know that I tend to do like some cute and creepy stuff at the same time. So hopefully, um, I will be able to achieve something like that tonight. I'm just trying to get um, the silhouette right. Hey, Dixie. Hi. Oh, all the way from Australia. What time is it over there in Australia? Hey, yeah, Mauri, ¿qué onda, bro? ¿Cómo estás? Um, hoy va a ser un Mickey. Va a ser un, una versión de Mickey un poquito diferente, pero esperemos que guste. So yeah, hopefully, um, I mean, it's pretty easy to make a, a Mickey, to be honest. Pretty basic shapes. I mean, I know right now it doesn't look like a like a big deal, but hopefully at the end, um, what I have in mind is maybe one day print this version, or m maybe like a similar version of this Mickey Mouse. Oh, 1.30 p.m. Oh, it's around, around um, lunchtime, right? Isn't it? So, um, right now I have two different subtools. One is the head, the other one is the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the head, so I have something more interesting. I'm just using Dynamesh, pretty straightforward. And I'm going to play with 
making this a little bit more recognizable even though it's not going to be like a carbon copy of Mickey Mouse I still want to have this look to him hot and humid summer here uh, <laughs> Yeah, also, um, Australia is one of those countries that I still want to visit, like, uh, looks really, really interesting. Just like Vietnam, it's on my wish list of countries. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to get the, the main shapes of Mickey, it's not really that hard to come up with something that already looks like Mickey. It's pretty recognizable and he has a very unique silhouette so we'll see. Um I think I'm going to do the legs in a different sub tool. So I have more control over the legs and the shoes. I mean, if this stream ends uh, ends up being super super quick, then I guess I'll, I'll do another character. I already have something in mind, which is going to be fun, but only if I finish this like really really quick. Just finished lunch, oh, <laughs> just in time. But right here it's um nine nine seven p.m. So. It's not really that late. Okay. So. A ghost of Christmas. Um, Ricky Rose. <laughs> I really like that name. Ricky. Ricky the Mouse. A unicorn. Hello. Adrian. Hi, how are you doing? So for those of you who are barely joining in, I'm going to do like a, like my own version of, of Mickey Mouse. Or not my own version, but a version that I had on my head for, for time now some for some time. So it's gonna be a different one. Right now, it already looks like Mickey, at least with silhouette. So, okay, do this in black. Uh, I already have something very recognizable. So, what I'm going to do next, start. I already have the foundation of what I want to do, so I'm going to start defining this. Hey, you're doing great, the unicorn. <laughs> See you, uh, that piercing music, it's kinda annoying. I know, sometimes, I mean, uh, it's funny because I always have, I always, ha I always have a lot of trouble finding um, the proper music to have on my streams. I used to have like this playlist of different um, free to use music, so YouTube won't have any issue with um, the streaming, the streaming audio. But uh, I'm not really someone who listens to music while they work, and this is like the best music that I could find. That it's not super um, invasive, that it's very distracting. It's like a, a lot of background music. So sorry about that. Sorry about that. I have a, only a frozen video and no sound. Really? That's really weird. Um, let me see. So apparently everything is running smoothly. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's really weird, um, Adrian. I have no idea why, why you have like a frozen screen. Hey, Manuel. Uh, what type of computer do you have to model in ZBrush? Uh, you don't require like a uh, very exp expensive hardware, to be honest. Um, ZBrush really um, relies a lot on, on RAM. So as long as you have like a decent amount of RAM, that's good enough. For example, uh, I have a graphic uh, 1080 card, but uh, to be honest, in ZBrush, it, it, it's not really that helpful. And as for RAM, I have a, I have 32 gigs of, of RAM, so it's good enough. But um, even if you have like a smaller amount of RAM, you will be able to run ZBrush. The only difference is that um, you won't ha you won't be able to subdivide that much. You have like a very heavy mesh. Rodent of unusual size, it's from Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that movie. I mean, I, I can't, um, I have no idea when was the last time that I saw that movie, but uh, yeah, I remember that creature and the movie. The Inigo Montoya scene, it's like very unique. Yeah, that movie doesn't get that much um, attention. I mean, I know there is a fan base, but uh, it's not really that known. So my idea for this Mickey Mouse, it's going to be like, mainly, this is going to be like a hazmat suit. And instead of, instead of a face, he's going to have like this um, gas mask. So right now I'm just blocking the shapes. Uh, it's okay in Switch and Twitch. Yeah, it's weird. Um, apparently on Facebook Live I might have some issues. Uh, Wilton, ¿qué onda? Saludos, estaba esperando por YouTube, pero lo encontré en Facebook Live. Está raro porque algunas personas están quejando de que en Facebook no está funcionando tan bien y otras personas dicen que, que en Twitch funciona bien, pero que en YouTube no y así, entonces, quién sabe, está, está extraño esto. Hey, Fitam. Hi, I'm new to Seabridge. Oh, well. welcome aboard. Um, are you able to animate your models? Um, yes, you are. However, not straight from Seabridge. I mean, right now, this mesh, it's, it, it doesn't have the proper topology to being like deformed and animated. So what you need to do after you have like the, the sculpture done is take the, the mesh into Maya or 3 ds Max, Blender, any software package that, that you can that you can do uh, any type of retopology and do a proper topology for animation over there so right now i'm struggling with um, the face i think i'm going to do something like this Uh, okay, thank you. Just not trying to understand subdivision. Mm, you have 32. Uh, yeah, you won't have any issues. I mean, to be honest, uh, I rarely go like into like, let's say, 40 million or something like that, police. It, it's really weird, but it could happen. However, 
most of the time my models tend to be not that heavy, even if I'm not using like any type of retopology system. Straight the sculpture doesn't tend to be that heavy. As long as you have a, like a, a very well laid foundation of the model, like doing the anatomy and the muscle system and structure, like the bone structure, you want to have like a very heavy mesh. It's gonna be pretty easy to have something looking this decent enough without have without having to invest like millions of polygons into the sculpting. William, um, you'll try to chill hop, chill hop music. I'll have to look into that. Maybe for the next stream, I'll, I'll actually find some non-annoying music. It's definitely definitely going to my to-do list. Looking for some music for these streamings because the other thing is the the music that I have from my pre previous streams started to become like super annoying because each week it was like pretty much listening to the same stuff so it became pretty annoying to listen to the same tracks over and over so uh, hopefully you will be able to tell what I'm aiming for right now with this character do you feel that Wacom's and Dick setting HD will be helpful for production Um well to be honest uh, I have used like different sizes of, of digital, digital tablets I'm not a big fan of like the big ones and I try not to use that often at Tintix, especially because I already got used to having like very small tablets. And let's say I want to make, uh, I don't know, like a movement from this corner from the screen to, to the other one. Having like a big tablet, it will, it will require, it will require to my arm to, to do this type of movement. However, having a very small tablet, it's easier because you just need to move a little bit the, the wrist and that's all. Adrian, um, Adrian, am I the only one who can't watch here this stream? Uh, apparently you are. Um, that's really weird. Hey, Romano, saludos hasta allá, Guayaquil. Bienvenido aquí al streaming. <laughs> to be honest, it looks kind of awful right now, but hopefully at the end it will look better. Ah, oh, it's okay, Seahawk. <laughs> it happens to me like sometimes I try to listen to streamings, however the music it's not really something that I'm enjoying and it gets gets in the way of enjoying the streaming so I get it completely don't worry Wilton <laughs> Miki terrorista <laughs> si sí, quiero algo así diferente ya había hecho uno así parecido hace ya varios años pero justamente quiero hacer algo poquito mejor esta vez digo la idea es que sea Miki pero pero un Mickey diferente. Eh, 
So Hopefully this will work. Um, it's gonna be more useful if I have like the black eyes for this part. Again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I'm just trying to finish this model as quick as possible. Well, not as quick. I mean, I, I do want to invest the proper time on this character. However, um, hopefully since it's a very simple character to do, I won't have to invest that much time. I, I will be able to do another one, which I already have in mind. So I'm still trying to figure out which type of mask am I, am I going to use for this character. De nuevo, igual si alguien tiene como alguna pregunta, uh, sin problemas podemos estar aquí respondiendo. Nada más que tengo un poco de paciencia porque uh, algunas de las cosas de ese stream están en inglés. Y luego me hago bolas con un poco en el chat, pero, pero igual si tiene preguntas en español no hay ningún problema. So I'm going to do the shorts. So as you can see, right now it's just tweaking a little bit more um, the main shapes. I don't have that much that much um, resolution at the moment. But what I want is have like the main shapes done. That way I, I can actually invest time on doing the sculpture and the wrinkles, because I want like the entire black thing to be like an like a hazmat suit with wrinkles or, and all that. So. Hopefully it will look interesting at the end. Uh, let me save this. Oh, it's working on Twitch. Uh, that's really weird. Yeah, it's the first time that I heard that there were some audio problems on, on Facebook, but not on Twitch. <laughs> Esa larva. <laughs> Tus dioses peruanos también andan de contento con tu tributo. So I might want to do a, a different version of the mask. Just to see how it works. Mm. Now, as you can, going to stick with the other one, the long one. Yeah, <laughs> it's Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse meets Breaking Bad. That's the perfect way of um, describing the project. So right now. 
this is going to be a different mesh. And this is going to be like a hoodie going on top of the character. Hey Bishar, how are you doing mate? Great to see you on here. Um, for those of you who, who don't know uh, VM Bishar, he's an amazing sculptor. He's been doing like these amazing um, sculptures with a perfect anatomy and I've seen his work like, I, I've seen him work like, he works without any symmetry. Like it's pretty, pretty amazing. I might want to merge these two because it's starting to look a little weird to have those two separated into just two meshes. Let me see. There we go. Hey, XW, um, nice to have you here. Welcome. I'm doing my own take on Mickey Mouse. As, as Seahawk said, it's like a mixture between Breaking Bad and Mickey Mouse. So hopefully at the end, we'll have an interesting character to look at. And I haven't still divided or I am um, changed the, the resolution of Dynamite at all. I'm still working with a very low budget of polygons. The reason is because I, I want to have like everything lay out as as low poly as possible. That way if I want to do like a big change, I, I don't have to work with uh, a big number of polygons. Can be done pretty easy because I don't have that much geometry. And since I used um, spheres to create the base mesh, I now able to, to uh, isolate certain parts using polygroups, which comes really handy, especially when doing like this type of stuff, like just playing with shapes and trying to figure out um, how the character is going to be. Hey, Tomas. Mm. Mm. En las orejas, la geometría es delgada y si uno usa clay build up, afecta a ambos lados. ¿Hay forma de que quede que solo afecte a un lado? Sí. Lo que tengo ahorita activado, este es mi user interface, así que yo hice por mi parte porque tengo los botones que más utilizo aquí arriba, pero utilizo este que se llama back face masking. Lo que se hace es que, justamente lo que dice, si empiezo a modificar aquí, en la parte de atrás lo modifica. Y lo que quiero es que no modifique la parte de atrás. Entonces, si activo Backface Masking, la parte de atrás queda intocada. <ríe> intocada. <ríe> no es afectada. Y esto lo puedes encontrar... O sea, depende de cada brocha que tengas. Digamos, ahorita tengo la de Clay Buildup. Me voy a la parte de Brush. Auto Masking. Y aquí está Backface Masking. Y si cambio la de Clay nada más, entonces otra vez tengo que hacer lo mismo. Y me Brush. Auto masking y back face, back face masking. Oh, this is your first stream on stream on YouTube. Um, I'm honored. Um, XW. Hope you're enjoying the streaming so far. Maybe it's way too fat. Something like this. 
a Dalton Moss treaty. What's up? Hey, no problem, XW. Glad you're enjoying the, the, the streaming. Again, I, I was asked, um, how am I able to, for example, work on the ears? Right now, the ears are really thin. So certain brushes, if I, for example, sculpt on this side of the ear, it will affect um, the faces on the back of the ear. So in order to, let's say, protect the opposite side of where you're working, you, you, what you need to do is get the brush, auto masking and activate back face masking. That way if you actually start working in a very thin mesh and let's say exaggerate the forms, the back of it, it won't be affected. So it's like a, like a, an invisible mask that you're applying to everywhere you sculpt. And again, I, I'm just using primitives to create like the base mesh, like spheres, cubes, cylinders. It's like um, doing a traditional sculpting, a traditional sculpture. Right now, he, he looks like a like a street. Mickey Mouse kind of thing. So hopefully at the end we'll have something a little bit more aggressive looking. So I'm going to use mesh by Dynamesh. First I need to place subtraction to zero so I have only quads. There we go. And I think I can start adding more resolution to my mesh because I already have like this laid um, again it's a projection to zero Yeah, I know. It's not like super useful to, to have a hazmat suit with shirts, but uh, I mean, he's Mickey Mouse, so he can do whatever he wants. Um, Wilton, ¿terminaste el cerdo que estabas modelando para el concurso? No, todavía no termino el cerdo. De hecho, a decir verdad, casi no he podido trabajar en él. Esperemos que este fin de semana lo termine, porque de hecho es el sábado es el deadline. Entonces sí, sí quiero terminarlo a tiempo. Yeah, for sure. Um, at the end, well, uh, depends on um, how much time I'm invested in this, but yeah. No problem. Um, I could do a, a render in Keyshot at the end if I'm if I'm able to. It won't be an issue. Don't worry. Okay, need a little bit more resolution. Actually, what I'm going to do is instead of adding more resolution, I'm just going to use 
It's called Trispro. But first. So, I'm going to start using a Skull Trace Pro. Just want to add some resolution to certain parts of the model. Not everywhere. to look at my reference pictures. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of reference of different hazmat suits and different them. Um, like gas masks. Hey Vinicio, saludos. I mean, even right now, I don't have that much polygons, but I want to do some of the wrinkles, at least the main ones, to know how the the flow of the of the garment is going to be. I could do 
some type of I mean you have to like I suppose they're supposed to be like buttons I guess not entirely sure and I'm going to merge the legs with the upper torso because there is no sense of having like the shorts as a different mesh. <laughs> First, let me save it. Miguelowski, le vas a poner los guantes como de Mickey. Sí, es la idea. Igual sus zapatos grandes. Al menos los guantes y los zapatos, creo que los dejaré como como es el diseño original. down remesh by dynamesh again going to do a little bit more geometry there we go now we can actually sculpt some details right here some wrinkles Hey Mario, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Sí, el personaje es... Quiero hacer un Mickey, pero este Mickey lo tenía en la cabeza hace tiempo. De hecho, había hecho una versión hace como cuatro años, muy parecida a esta. Bueno, en lo que pude hacer hace cuatro años. Entonces, quería justamente hacer como una versión nueva de ese Mickey con máscara de gas. Y... Un poco diferente al Mickey normal. Es un poco la idea del streaming. Oops, forgot to do um, symmetry. So this is going to start looking like very, very rough. Especially because um, sometimes wrinkle like this, I'll do a project in Marvelous Designer and then export the mesh here into ZBrush. Because it's easier to make the wrinkles like that, but um, I wanted to do everything by myself, by hand, old style. Especially because it's a uh, Seabridge streaming and not a marvelous. <laughs> River House arms. Yeah, those, those are the best, right? Like classic vintage cartoon characters with that type of arms.
Mm, ah, perfecto, Mario. Uh, Vinicio, una pregunta, ¿cómo le hiciste para fusionar los subtools? Ok, uh, digamos que tenemos la estrella, ¿no? Y que aparte tenemos otro mesh, vamos a hacer nuestro patricio de, con el que siempre practicamos. Y aparte tenemos un... Una esfera. Ahora... Tengo los dos subtools. Lo que voy a hacer es irme a subtool. Y aquí, irme a merge. Y hay dos formas. Bueno, hay varias formas. Puedo darle merge visible. Y eso significa que todos los layers, o todos los subtools que estén visibles, se van a convertir en un solo mesh. Por ejemplo, voy a darle Merge Visible. Y ahora me crea esta esfera con el círculo. Ahora, no están todavía fusionados. De hecho, si le pongo Control Shift y le doy clic, todavía puedo aislar la esfera del, de la estrella. Dije triángulo hace rato, ¿verdad? La otra forma es darle Merge Down. Y eso es lo que va a hacer, en lugar de crear un subtool diferente, Simplemente los va a unir dentro del mismo tool. Pero es lo mismo que el anterior. Van a estar separados realmente. Para que sea una fusión, hay dos formas que a mí me gusta utilizar. Una sería Dynamesh. Puedes darle W para sacar el gizmo. Y darle en el engrane. Remesh by Dynamesh. Y ya lo, lo ajustas a la cantidad que quieres. Y una vez que estás contento, le das de nuevo el engrane. Accept. Y ahora si intento separarlo. Me sale que está unido ya a la estrella del, de la esfera. La segunda forma sería... Voy a separar esto. Y voy a activar... Los dos están en agregar. Estos son los modificadores de Live Boolean. Voy a activar Live Boolean. Por ejemplo, si esto lo pusiera en Substraer. Lo que estoy quitando es la estrella del círculo. Pero lo que queremos es agregarlo. Entonces lo dejo los dos con el agregar. Y me voy aquí, igual en Subtool, Boolean, Make Boolean Mesh. E igual me crea un nuevo Mesh que está con el Boolean. Este es el Mesh del Boolean. Y este es el Mesh con DynaMesh. Que son lo mismo, o sea, son diferentes formas de hacer lo mismo. Uh, Chen Li. Chen Li, Li, can you speak in big voice? Uh, you mean like louder? Sure, let me take the audio a little bit lower. So, if any if anyone is having like pr problems listening to me, like any problems with the audio, just let me know. I was just explaining how to merge two different subtools, which I use like booleans and remesh by Dynamesh. I don't know if you you guys want to want me to speak the same uh, the same process. Uh, the issue here is that sometimes I get um, questions in English and in Spanish, so I, I won't translate all the questions unless someone really wants to to know like a particular question that I answered. But right now, uh, well, wh what I did before was just um, merging two different subtools into one by using booleans and remesh by Dynamesh. But again, if you want, you if you guys want me to to repeat that, I'll be happy to. Now, r right now, what I did is just play with the play build up um, brush. So I have like this weird looking surface, like very rough, very sketchy. But this is perfect because uh, I want to make use of those like lines to create the wrinkles. Especially because right now I'm just playing with the, the main shapes, trying to figure out how the character is going to look. So I might change some stuff, especially because I want to have like a very recognizable silhouette. Ah, no hay problema con el audio. Ah, me alegra. Uh, yeah, so... 
is my reference for Mickey. Again, it's not like a carbon copy of Mickey, but I mean, close enough, so it's recognizable. Which is pretty easy to recognize with the, the ears, to be honest. It's not like I'm doing something really, really crazy. Now, for the hands, let me save this first. Ah, no hay de qué, Vinicio. Para las manos voy a utilizar Seasphere. Lo que mencionaba hace rato es que ya saben que mis streamings tienden a ser en español y en inglés. Entonces, si ven que respondo o que hago algo y que lo estoy explicando en inglés y les gustaría que lo repita en español, igual nada más escríbanme. Y con gusto lo. Lo repito. So right now I'm just going to work with, with these spheres to create um, those hands. Let me see how, how many fingers. I guess he has four, but I'm not certain. Yeah, he has four. So it's pretty easy. Como tiene cuatro dedos es bastante fácil hacerlo. Y quizás le ponga... Igual para hacer el preview solo pones A y así puedes ver cómo se va a ver al final el mesh con las Sea Spheres. So it, I mean, it's pretty easy to make the, the Mickey Mouse hand. It's not like it's a very anatomical correct hand. So I can do this pretty easy. El pie de pie, pie pequeño. <risa> de hecho estaría bueno para un streaming hacer algo de pie pequeño. Ya no me acordaba de esa película. Sería una buena idea. I'm going to save this as a hand one. I'm going to make the polymesh 3D. Now I'm able to sculpt in this hand. It's, it's not really that easy because I'm really used to sculpting like realistic hands. So having like a very cartoony hands, it's a little deceiving. Because you want to make some changes, because the, you know that's the way a hand is. However, since this is supposed to be like a very cartoony, a uh, very iconic hand, I'm not able to change that much. Y 
pie pequeño estilo zombie. <risa> no es mala idea. Estaba pensando hacer un pie pequeño realista. O sea, como se vería de repente un... Uno de su especie. Pero igual la versión zombie también me agrada. Going to insert the hand to my Mickey. Insert. Feel the hand pretty weird because <laughs> this is not how I used to the hands. La mano está haciendo algo tan cartoon es que llega un punto en el que la anatomía ya no importa o ya no importa tanto. Y convertí la mano en Dynamesh para poder ya trabajarle los detalles. <risa> Unas bombas Molotov en las manos. Es una buena idea esa. <risa> o una Kalashnikov. Hopefully you can tell who he is, <laughs> just by seeing the silhouette. And I'm going to add a ring.
¿Cómo hago para sombrear todo el personaje? Um, presiono V. Con V lo que haces es cambiar estos colores. Por ejemplo, si en lugar de tener blanco elijo un color negro, todo el mesh se pone en negro. O si pusiera un rojo, pues sería un rojo. Pero como por default tienes uno blanco, que es con el que apareces, y uno negro, si presionas V, cambia de, de colores. Maybe I can do some zipper line right here. So in a pretty um, neutral pose. can actually use one of the IMMs that Zebrush already has for the zipper line. Mm. We'll utilize an IMM, the zipper. Um, creo que hay dos. Metal y plástico. Mm. Dejen ver mis referencias. Uh, plástico. Uh, hey, Lord of Mountains, uh, you use your characters for true printing or animation? Well, um, like this character, um, I mean, I would love to do like a true printing of this one, but also an animation. So depends on the project entirely. I tend to do a lot of work for true printing. So even for like different types of true printing, not only like characters and toys but also jewelry dental prosthesis like different stuff so how i'm going to focus this character right now is going to be like a mainly if, if i was going to do this as a tree toy like a tree toy a uh, tree printing as a collectible so at the end i might do like some booleans to know that everything is uh, like waterproof water sealed and that I don't have any like weird geometry that will have issues when, when I do the printing. So hopefully I could do a 3D print of this character. But I will also love to do the retopology and do like a, maybe a little short with this guy. So could do I could do both with this guy. Especially because he's pretty simple to be honest. He doesn't need like a very crazy topology. He's pretty straightforward and he doesn't even have, have a face. So that makes everything really, really easy at the moment of doing the real topology. ¿Cómo haces para seleccionar una subtool? ¿Hay una opción del teclado? Sí. Uh, digamos que quiero elegir los guantes. En lugar de irme aquí, puedo presionar N y me aparece la lista de las subtools. O puedo presionar Alt y le doy clic a la subtool que quiero elegir 
y pum, se selecciona. Ese es como el shortcut, los dos shortcuts para elegir subtools. So I was just explaining that um, there are two shortcuts to have a like um, different selections of subtools. Instead of going to the subtool list right here and looking for that subtool and then selecting one, uh, what you can actually do is either press N and you will have like this list right uh, near your cursor and the other way is actually pressing Alt and clicking in the subtool that you want to choose. For example, let's say I want to work on the hands. So right now I have the eye selected. I press Alt and then click on the hands. And that's a quick way of selecting different subtools without going to the list. Esas cosas que muchas veces haces y ya no te das cuenta que haces. Es muy... Es algo que sale como muy intuitivo. Ya ni siquiera lo piensas que... ¿Qué que, te, que, te, que tecla estoy presionando? O ¿Qué subtool estoy buscando? Solo lo haces como intuitivamente. So I'm almost done with the body, to be honest, I, I won't invest that much time on doing like a perfect sculpture. It's pretty simple, so he doesn't require that much of working on details and stuff like that. I think the arms are way too long. Something like this. I think it's better. And I'm going to save this. Ah, no, okay, well done. Have you ever done articulated figures? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's something that I haven't done yet, which is pretty straightforward. Um, you, the only thing that you need to do is like figure out the way that the type of articulation that you're going to have and use booleans to make the cuts so let's say for example this is the arm molding mesh let's say i have this arm right and this is going to be like a joint and then we have another part of the arm which is going like right here so, like saying this pretty straightforward and um, without going into much, too much detail, um, what you need to do is activate live booleans and let's say select this as subtract, and that way what I'm going to cut is actually the circle, the sphere. So it's going to be like way easier just to, to work like this using um, booleans. can have something like this and 
maybe this part goes like this. There we go. Say something like this. And then I need to convert this into Boolean mesh. So I go into Sceptual Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Deactivate transparency. And this is my Boolean mesh. Now, since I did the cuts in the inside, we are not able to see it. So something that I really enjoy doing is just inserting a cube. here and subtract as a boolean again placing it right here in the middle and then we can see where the cut has been done and you need only to print this version like this part so if I actually let's say I insert this part of the model You can see that it, it fits perfectly. So if I move this, you can see it fills the entire hole that I designed because this is what I used to cut uh, the part. So it, it's like, like a very abstract and lazy way of demonstrating how to do some articulations, but that's one way that I can think of. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of ways. I haven't done any tree print, uh, tree printed um, toys that have articulations only collectible, so they, they won't move. <laughs> Which I think it's a little easier to do. Nike, al Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Podría ser. Tengo que pensar qué tipo de zapatos ponerle. Creo que de momento me voy a pegar un poco a los zapatos normales que tiene todo el tiempo. Y ya de ahí los voy a ir modificando a ver qué tal. So, es algo así. Y luego esta parte. Eso nunca me sale, hacer los moldes o agujeros. Uh, ¿sí, ¿Sí lo entendiste o quieres que lo explique en, en español, Wilton? Y ya tenemos los zapatos. Some dynamesh. Ah, oh, my, my pleasure, Lord. Um, yeah, I, I still haven't done anything like that, so I haven't looked for any tutorials. But I'm pretty sure, like, for example, um, I guess Shane Olson has done. I'm pretty sure he has done like any type of. Um, Toys with articulation, so I'm pretty sure he has a tutorial, or maybe uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say his name all wrong. But um, Ayman, who is also a streamer here in Pixel, I'm um, in the Cyprus in the Cyprus Live channel, and I, I I've seen his work, and he has some articulated things that he has done for 3D printing. So maybe you can actually contact him or watch his streams and ask him because to be honest uh, 
I mean, that's the way I, I would do the, the, the articulations, but uh, again, I haven't done anything like that, so I might be doing something wrong. Uh, no entiendo cómo haces. Um, bueno, lo que hago es... Voy a borrar estos. Digamos que... Lo que tienes que hacer es que tienes... Voy a dejarlo ahorita con un modelo nada más, ¿no? Que es un poco más simple. Tengo este cilindro y quiero ponerle como... Digamos que el agujero, con esta forma. Entonces... Lo que voy a hacer es poner esta cosa morada exactamente donde quiero que sea el corte. Ahora, obviamente como es el interior no se va a ver. Entonces puedes utilizar aquí Transparency. Y así vas a poder ver el interior. Y ya solo lo acomodas exactamente donde quieras. Ahora la otra cosa es Live Booleans. Uh, esto sí es como por default. Lo que hace Live Booleans es hacer los cortes. Para eso voy a activarlo aquí. Dice Live Boolean. Y si te das cuenta, cada subtool tiene tres círculos diferentes. Voy a trabajar con este, con la pieza morada. Y voy a desactivar transparencia para que se vea un poco mejor lo que hago. Entonces, el primer círculo significa unión. Si le hago, me voy a la parte de subtool. Boolean, le doy Make Boolean Mesh. Lo que me va a hacer es la unión de este y el, la pieza morada, del cilindro y la pieza morada. Ahora, si le doy clic a este nada más, ya no existe el resto de la pieza porque lo que hice fue un merge. Esa es una forma de hacerlo. La otra operación que hacen los booleans es subtraer. Que en este caso, la pieza morada la usan para cortar el interior del cilindro. Igual si le doy de nuevo make boolean mesh, tengo la pieza ya el interior hecho. Y la tercera operación que tienen los booleans es la diferencia, que significa que en donde hay intersección entre la pieza morada y el cilindro, es lo que se va a crear. En este caso, esta parte. Entonces, con esto, puedes hacer los cortes para, el para pues, si vas a hacer alguna impresión 3D o, como mencionaba hace rato, alguna articulación. Puedes ver, no sé, puedes buscar algún juguete articulado y ver cómo son los cortes y simplemente imitarlos en, en, con booleans. Tienen como un círculo los zapatos. Voy a proteger la suela y nada más suavizar un poco. Y listo. Para hacer los moldes de joyería en cera. Usualmente esos moldes se suelen hacer ya por el joyero. O sea, lo que tú vas a darle es la impresión. O sea, digamos que si este Mickey lo fueras a hacer, es, lo fueras a hacer impresión para joyería. Esto es lo que le vas a dar el Mickey. Y ellos ya hacen con hule, con goma, la, los moldes. Es muy raro que sea al revés, o sea, que tú le des el molde, digamos, que impreso en 3D. Nunca he visto que nadie lo haga así, pero, o sea, sé que se puede. Simplemente no... Es mucho más fácil hacer la impresión 3D del personaje o de la pieza de joyería y esa es la que le sacas el molde. Pero ya se lo sacas no de forma digital, sino... Ahora sí que de la forma tradicional.
I don't know, I think the shoes are really big. I'm not certain if this is big enough or this is too small. Yeah, I think this is too small. Too far in front. Okay, so they should be like shorter right. Something like this. Yeah, yeah, I still need to figure out like, um, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Hmm. So I try to figure out this and I might start working on the proportions. I mean, this is going to be quite interesting to work on this. Yeah, I need to make him go a little bit. Ah, la cola es verdad. Gracias, Wilton. Legs should be a little bent. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, let me see if I can do something about it. Sí. Sí, que de hecho creo que la cola la pondría hasta el piso para que más o menos se balancee ahí. Quiero hacer un poco esto para atrás, pero tendría que trabajar también la máscara y así, y primero tengo que terminarla, entonces voy a dejarlo de momento así. Vamos a ver. Something like this.
Y voy a trabajar la, el interior de la máscara. So for the hard surface stuff of the mask, first I need to save this. I'm going to work in a separate mesh for this. Quería ver si me da tiempo hacer otro personaje, pero... Bueno, ya veremos. Igual y sí. Y un personaje que he querido modelar desde hace tiempo y no... Bueno, no desde hace tiempo, pero... Le traigo ganas. So, I was going to show you how I tried to do this with plastic. Uh... Voy a utilizar una MM para las para el zipper. Ups, está muy grande. Ir al revés. Así. Está bien. Uh, creo que es una curva. Sí, fuck. Bueno. Como tenía symmetry, me hizo una curva que seguía solo acá en el interior. Nada más la acomodo. Al menos por mientras. ¿Qué iba a hacer? Ah, la máscara. So make Boolean Mesh, digo, Make Boolean Mesh 3D. Uh, comencé con mis dudas. Oye, ¿podrías ayudarme de, diciéndome cómo guardar los hotkeys para cada. para que cada que cargue Seabrush me aparezcan por defecto? Sí, es fácil. Uh, presionas, por ejemplo, no sé, si quieres un, short, un hotkey para alguna brocha en específico, lo que tienes que hacer es. Digamos que quieres una brocha, un hotkey para flakes, ¿no? Lo que haces es presionar Control Alt y le das clic a lo que le quieres asignar un, un hotkey. Puede ser una brocha, puede ser un botón aquí o algún submenú, o sea, lo que tú quieras. Entonces, Control Alt y clic. Uh, estoy buscando una que no me afecte tanto. Esta. Entonces, si se dan cuenta, en la parte de arriba me dice Press any combination to assign a custom hotkey. Lo que presione a partir de este momento va a asignarle un, el nuevo hotkey. Ahorita como tengo todos mis hotkeys ya asignados, no puedo presionar nada, pero si presionas un F o un 
6 o lo que sea después de ese momento le asigna el hotkey a lo que le, has, le hayas presionado el control alt por ejemplo puedes presionar el control alt y le das clic a no sé bloquea save as y otra vez me aparece lo mismo el letrero de aquí que me dice que una vez que haga, presione alguna combinación de teclas o alguna tecla le va a asignar ese hotkey a la función de save as y ya cuando quieras um, bueno, hay dos formas. Te puedes ir a la parte de Preference, Hotkeys, y le das Save. Y digamos que eso puede ser un archivo que puedes llevar a otras computadoras, y así puedes llevar tus Hotkeys a todas partes. Y para que se quede por default, lo que tienes que presionar es aquí en Store. Entonces, cada que inicias ZBrush, como le presionas Store, tus Hotkeys van a estar asignadas como le hayas hecho. O la otra opción es cuando te salgas de ZBrush, te va a decir, oye, cambiaste los hotkeys, ¿quieres asignarlos como por default? Y ya le pones que sí, y es la otra forma. Pero es hasta que cierre ZBrush. ¿Qué andar con todos? Ah, igual si no me voy a entender, igual avísame Mario. Sí, ya. Ya tocaba, ¿no? Ya por fin vas a conocer a Pablo. <risas> Vamos a ver. Es como algo así. Voy a duplicar este para tener los subtools. Y lo que voy a hacer es hacerlo un poco más pequeño. Yo creo que por aquí y por aquí. So I'm using um, Simodeler to do the hard surface stuff for the mask something like this Perfecto, ya, ya hace falta. Ya solo falta que te compres el Call of Duty y ya estarás completo. Y voy a utilizar. So, um, for this part, I want to have a radial symmetry. But. Um, sí. Uh, No, 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 sí. X, Y. Yep, Y. And instead of the rail count on 8, I'm going to try 16. I think this is way better and something like this.
something like this, yeah. Sí, exacto, el filtro de la mascarilla, no me acuerdo cómo decirle. <ríe> hey, saludos. No sé cómo leer tu nombre, <ríe> pero tú sabes a quién saludo. <ríe> Entonces tengo esto. Ah, ¿Cómo cambio el color del user interface? Me voy a preference. Um, y colors. Y aquí vienen los colores del, del user interface. Ya el color que elijas, pues puedes ir modificando. Por ejemplo, que las letras sean de rosa y los textos que estén... Um, Seleccionados son azules y cuando no están seleccionados que sean naranjas. O sea, puedes cambiarles todos los colores. En preference y eye colors. Y aquí vienen los diferentes. O sea, digamos que lo que tengo en verde es justamente lo que modifique en mi UI para tenerlo así. Going to continue doing the filter. Apparently, I have like. Something like this goes like this. And then another one, which is Voy a utilizar de nuevo C-Modeler para ponerle varios. C-Modeler es como modelar con malla, como box modeling normal. Lo cual es bastante útil, así no tengo que regresarme a malla. Now I always have issues trying to find out um, what action I want to do next. I, I guess I'm going to try polyloop. Yep. So it's going to be something like I mean, I'm trying to do like the filter, like the metal thing that goes in the end of the breathing mask. So it's supposed to be, give me a second. It's supposed to be obvious that this is the part that I'm doing. And I shall save. Ese Pablo, ¿qué onda, bro? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, uh, quiero sacar UVs de una pieza que ya tiene sus divisiones. Si le doy Work and Clone, el material se cambia a material blanco, en el que no puedo pintar los colores del Protect, ni puedo ver las líneas del Sim. Uh, es extraño, deja... Checo... Make Polymesh, subdivido, y voy a trabajar en el mesh de hasta abajo, en el más low poly. Si plugin, no, deja antes guardo por si sí cualquier cosa. ¿Dónde me quedé? Aquí. Si plugin, UV Master, Work and Clone. Y este se vuelve blanco. Protect. 
le tienes que poner aquí Enable Control Painting. Y ahora sí ya puedes pintar, por ejemplo, Proteger. No con la de Move, obviamente. Entonces ya puedes empezar a pintar sin problemas. Lo que tienes que hacer es activar esa parte donde dice Enable Control Painting. Y ya puedes empezar a, a pintar sin problemas. Y una vez que tienes esto, le pones Unwrap. Y ahora debes de poder ver los check seams. Sí. sí, lo que pasa es que tienes que activar esto. Enable Control Painting. Y ya con eso puedes empezar a pintar el la protección o ¿no? donde quieres que pase el sim y ya que tienes esto pues nada más copy UVs me voy al mesh original que tiene todas las subdivisiones login paste UVs y le doy flatten para ver que todo ah no me deja porque tiene subdivisiones bueno le doy check sims Enable control painting uh, ah ok si sí, no entonces no va a dejar ya pero como ya tiene los UVs de este Digamos que de este mesh ya no hay ningún problema. Solo te deja hacer lo de los um, sims y lo de enable control painting en el clon, porque el clon es el que no tiene subdivisiones. Si este fuera a quitarle todas las subdivisiones de arriba, si ¿sí lo tenés activado. ¿Y no será que tienes alguna brocha que no tiene activado RGB? O sea que, por ejemplo, esta de estándar, si le doy clic, no pinta nada. Aunque tenga Enable Control Painting no, en el sim. Protect. No sé que tienes RGB desactivado. Este botón. Porque si lo tienes desactivado, pues no te va a permitir pintar nada. ¿Y qué pasa si hago submenús y meto brochas de... también se cargan? No, eso es solo para los shortcuts. Si quieres... Ah, lo que tú quieres cambiar es el user interface. Te vas a preferencias. Config. Y es lo mismo. Save UI es para que guardes tu user interface y la puedes llevar a otras partes. Load, you, load UI es obviamente para cargar algún user interface, el archivo que te van a dar. Creo que es punto... no sé, la verdad, punto UI creo. Y si le das aquí en Store Config, significa que cada vez que inicies ZBrush, vas a tener esta configuración. En este caso yo tengo los botones de aquí, y los colores cambiados, y sí. Pero una cosa son los shortcuts y otra del User Interface. Ah, va. No, de nada, bro. La otra parte que viene es, es la cosa verde. So I'm just going to start using again cylinders. Uh, I think it's a little bit bigger. big enough transform voy a desactivar symmetry radial porque no necesito eso and single edge loop Oh, ya sé qué hizo. Oh, fuck. Como tenía simetría, me hizo un... Sí, me insertó uno de cada uno. Bueno, 
este no. Sí, no. Um, ¿Cómo separas polygroups? Um, por ejemplo, esto. Le pongo control shift. Bueno, hay varias formas, pero te puedes ir a la parte de subtool, split. Oh, fuck, no la borré. <risa> bueno, digamos que tengo esto. Um, déjale cambio el polygroup a esto. Aquí está. Entonces me voy a split. Y dice group split. Y eso es lo que hace. Me dice que no se puede regresar. Le digo que sí. No importa. Y así ya tengo un subtool por cada sub, uh, polygroup. Ahora que si lo que quieres es nada más aislarlo. De nuevo, ese es un, sub, un solo subtool. Pongo control shift y le doy clic al subtool que quiero aislar. Y listo. Realmente no los estoy cortando, solo estoy ocultándolos. Y para invertir, control shift y arrastras. Y para borrar, control shift y clic en el canvas. Y eso ya saca de el isolation mode. Trying to see the size of it. So this is big enough. And then I'm, again, I'm going to use C modeler. Something like this. And like this. And another one that goes like this. So I'm just using like my different reference reference pictures. They have like a close enough um, edges to make like the, the details of the bevels. So um, image polygroup. There we go. Uh, maybe a little bit less. this and not that intense mm, yep like this and the same goes for this one so using um, similar is super useful because I, I can do this type of um, details without going into Trudis Max or Maya Ah, no, qué inicio. <ríe> Mickey Mouse dominando el mundo. <ríe> es la versión hardcore de Mickey Mouse, la versión de Banksy. <ríe> ¿Existe algo como para girar un spline? Como Lade en Max. No que yo sepa, o sea, debe haber alguno, pero es que son muchos modificadores. La verdad es que no sabría decir exactamente si hay alguno que haga eso.
and almost done with this one. Yeah, something like this. So, boom, boom, make polymesh filter. So I'm trying to see if I'm having issues with Facebook streaming. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with Cyprus right now. I mean, with the streaming on Facebook. It's really weird. Um, so I'm going to export each of every one of these parts into the mesh. So mm -mm, just delete this one. Click hidden. So for this one, I'm going to subdivide because I want to have like a very clean mesh because this is a boolean operation. This one doesn't require subdivision, neither this one or this one because it is all um, topological modifications. So only this one will require. Uh, this I can actually delete. I'm going to hide everything except the the one that has the boolean operation. Make boolean mesh, and there we go. Now, the rest of them is this and this and this to heat merge visible and I'm going to insert there we go and again merge visible and now I can actually Import this into my original mesh, my original sculpture. Insert. There we go. Oops, I think it's way too big. Oh, I have to see. Could be way too big. So I'm going to try to see if it's really too big this for for the Mickey Mouse mask. Maybe just a little bit smaller. Esto funciona un poco más. Auto groups. Now I want this and this and this as a separate subtool. And there we go. Save. 
Mickey. And now I'm going to do a zero mesh. And after that, I'm going to start sculpting the wrinkles without symmetry. And that's going to be it, I guess. So I'm going to duplicate this mesh. And now I'm going to hide every. Oh, I don't need this. I'm going to hide everything except the body. And I'm going to use zero measure. And uh, this is good enough. I mean, I might go a little lower just once, I guess. Yeah, I think it's, it's good. It's good, good. Now I'm go. I, I have two different subtools, which is the original sculpture, the high poly, and the low poly, which is the one that I did with zero mesh. Now I'm going to choose project, project all, subdivide, project all, subdivide again, project all again, and I'm going to go once more, subdivide and project all. See, I think it's good enough. Now I can actually start sculpting. So now it's just working without symmetry because, I mean, there are supposed to be wrinkles and their wrinkles tend not to be really symmetrical. Hey, cannot high all the way to, all the way from Ka Kazakhstan. How are you doing? Uh, what time is it over there in Kazakhstan?
Oh man, thanks, Dan Rita. I have no idea how long I've been speaking to myself. I hate with that when that happens. Um, so Jesus, I have no idea how long have I have I speaking have I been speaking to myself. Um, is this is it possible to be to see this video video later on? XW, yeah, this video is being recorded and. The guys from Pixelogic will upload the video to their um, uh, YouTube channel, so you can actually find on Pixelogic's YouTube channel like all the streamings that um, that different artists have been doing. So it's super super useful. Um, thank you, Kenneth. It's I'm from Mexico and it's 11 p.m. right now give or take uh, how many are you to see version want to learn together as a group I am well if you guys want to like if be part of a group that's like looking forward to learn Zbrush, uh, I know there are plenty of new people in the discord channel of um, Pixelogic. Uh, to be honest I, I don't really know the like the address or how to how to give you a link to the discord but yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just Google Zbrush Discord, it might appear. And you know, you can actually find a lot of artists on the Discord who are looking forward to, to learning different techniques and sharing their pipelines. Yeah, I had my, mu my microphone on mute. I have no idea for how long, but it happens to me really often, so it's not really a surprise. But thanks for <laughs> thanks for the heads up, um, Rita. Ah, thank you very much. was a character that I wanted to sculpt from for a long time. So for tonight's streaming, I, I was actually thinking between this, uh, like baby creature looking worm guy, creature, monster, <laughs> or Popeye, like a creepy looking Popeye. But I think there I already... I have already seen some amazing Popeye sculpt um, sculptures, so I think this was a good idea to sculpt. Pretty unique, or well, at least that I that's what I think. It gets really, really, I don't want to say annoying, but um, you really need a lot of patience to do everything without symmetry. It's really time consuming. Es la versión del Mickey anti como anticapitalista. Es 
So my idea is he's going to be like a Soviet looking Mickey Mouse. I'm gonna be really honest, I, I want sculpt the entire back of the character. I'll leave it for maybe other day. It's just too much detail to go into without symmetry. But at least the front will be defined. And right now I don't have that much um, that much resolution to be honest. I, I'm barely able to work right now, but I really enjoy working with our low poly mesh, especially things like this because I don't want to have like a, like two million polygons and be working with the wrinkles that I haven't defined yet. it's pretty useful to work like this like in layers like I won't add more resolution until I have like everything done in that um, resolution first Oh, I'm forgetting about the details on the globes. It's supposed to be like just lines, isn't it? Look some pictures. Yeah, just like three lines. <laughs> I 
they look horrible. I think this is pretty close. And I'm going to use extract. I'm just changing the thickness because I don't want to make those lines really, really big. Just barely visible. to hide everything except um, for the legs because uh, I haven't worked on the legs and he's he really needs he really needs some love on the legs And again, if you have any questions, just go ahead. Um, sometimes I might be explaining something in Spanish, so if you see me some saying something in Spanish and doing something that you might actually want to know. Let's say I'm working with subtools, and but I'm speaking in Spanish. Um, just ask me to say that again in English, and I, I won't mind. I'm just finishing like the da the last details. I mean, so far for tonight, this is far from over. But um, isn't it's good enough to have like a render? I just want to 
do some interesting wrinkles with the hands with the sleeves Let me save this. I'm going to merge the feed. Well, actually, the shoes with the with this little ring that they have. Merge down. Remesh by Dynamesh. Oops. I might want to change a little bit the proportions of this. Auto groups. I think this is more more like it. And again, I forget to do the symmetry. There we go. And now. Ah, muchas gracias, Vinicio. Uh, creo que solo voy a cambiarle lo de los ojos y ya. It's pretty much like the stuff from the eyes. So let me see if I can actually figure out this one. I'm forgetting about this one. Actually, I'm going to delete those and insert some proper cylinders. It's going to be more. Symmetrical. There we go, and I don't know. I might actually leave it like this. Oh, forget about the mask.
yeah, I guess I'm I'm going to leave the model like this. I mean, I'm pretty sure I still have to work on plenty of stuff. But, I mean... It gets, um, it sells the idea, right? I, I mean, I don't have to explain anything. Everyone understands that it's like a Mickey Mouse with a hazmat suit, so I'll say like mission accomplished. I'm just going to do a quick render in Kishet because to be honest, I, I really want to see this character with different materials. So I'm going to save this. Uh, voy a dejar el modelo hasta aquí. Lo único que voy a hacer es exportarlo. Los hábitos estos. So, yep, I think that's it. I'm going to do merge visible. Now, this is my Mickey guy. I need to find a proper name for this guy. Yeah, I need to find a name for the for the guy. I'm going to export the mesh as it is. Merged. And then I'm going to key shot. Give me a second, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do a, a quick render just um, just to have a pretty a pretty picture of the character. Um, so there you go, and import streaming. Uh -huh. And here we have our character. Now I'm going to do a quick render by using just the standard materials in Keyshot. It's like, first, let me look for a plastic. And. This is metal, this is metal again. This is like a brown, brownish metal. No, it, it looks like plastic actually. Like a little bit brownish. 
Well, actually, this one goes here. And this one is supposed to be a little bit more brown. This is going to be like uh, brownish green. Now it's going to be the same material from the for the globes. Um, Trip Galija, Galija? Sorry man, I'm pretty sure I butchered your name. No, this is Keyshot. I already exported the, the file as an OBJ. And I'm just doing a render in Keyshot just for, for the fun of it. Now, the shoes. Uh -uh -uh. I guess this is also white and this is supposed to be black it's supposed to be like the tail and also this is black now for this part They're not meant to be green, they're meant to be... I'm going to try with a yellow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just finishing the last touches. I mean, uh, actually just finishing the render of the character. Now I want to see how it looks all black. And this might actually be... This... shiny something like this this could be one version and yeah I don't know I I'm really thinking between this and like a green Hey ladders um, Thank you, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out which color should I use Like a green or like a black one I don't know guys what do you think? I'll actually maybe look for an HDRI that will fit.
the black one. Yeah, I think I agree. Or let me see if I yellow. <laughs> no, I don't think it works. I think I'm going to stick with the with the black one. Actually, I want to try something different. Just, I mean, I, I really like the black one, but uh, I really want to try this also. Because Keyshot already has like these procedural materials, well, not materials, textures. So I could actually find the camouflage. Oh, here it is. Mm. Not sure. Maybe too much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I, might, I might actually consider this one. I mean, to be honest, I really like the black one. But this also gives a lot of value to the character. Oh, man. Uh, I'm using Keyshot 7 at the moment. I haven't upgraded my, my Keyshot. Hey, muchas gracias, Mario. Um, I guess I'm going with black one. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't. I mean, I really like the the one with cam camouflage, but I think some of these wrinkles wrinkles get lost, and at least with the black one, you can actually see those those wrinkles. Yep, so I think I'm going to leave my character like this. Are we having trouble deciding?
uh, what HDRI am I using in the scene? I'm always using right now this one, which already, to be honest, I'm not certain where, where I got this one from. I think that this one comes with Keyshot already, but I'm not entirely sure. But, I mean, if you're looking for HDRIs, you can go to HDRI Heaven. Not like in, like in Heaven and Hell, just H A U V E N. And there are plenty of amazing free HDRIs. So you can actually download all of them. And they even have like 8K HDRIs and even the back plates. So plenty of stuff to play with. Yeah, no problem. A trip tripe. Um, did you model the stuff for Kerbal Space Program? No, um, I mean, I did some models, but uh, mainly I was just doing renderings and stuff like that for the. I mean, I, I joined the team pretty late. I joined um, when they were developing the the last expansion pack, the Making History. I know um, it's not Making History, or is, is it? I think it's Making History the last um, DLC that they had, like the expansion set. Yeah, making history. So I did like all the, the renders and the promotional art and the the art of the like, like the main art of the game. So the, when I entered the, the team, they already had like the, the Kerbals modeled, so as for the, the characters and all that, I, I did not um, touch them. But hey, thank you. I'm glad you liked um, my art station. So I'm going to leave the character right now as like this. Thanks to everyone, everyone who came by. It's been an amazing streaming and I really wanted to, to sculpt this for, for a really long time. I mean, it was on my wish list of stuff that I wanted to the model and I will be finishing this one later I'm going to do like all the wrinkles like I might actually use some alphas for for the wrinkles of the of the clothes and I will do some great apology for it because I, I really want to do uh, like a very small animation yeah it's all um, for, you mean for this character? Like, is, is it all rendered in Keyshot, or you mean like my, in my portfolio? So, again, thanks to everyone who came by. Uh, see you next Thursday uh, at the same time. And what else? What else? Uh, really like the yellow one also. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm keeping the black one. Looks more creepy. And yeah, you can find me on social media, Nerd Station, Instagram, all that. Up here, you can find like um, like up here, my Art Station, my well, I don't actually use Twitch that anymore. I'm mainly doing the streamings here on on Zbrush. But Facebook, Instagram, Art Station, all that, you can find me on social media as Oscar Torejo or Heretic Templar. And yep, thanks to everyone who came by. I really enjoyed doing this. It was a really interesting character. Even though it's supposed to be like really simple, I, I really want to have like, like all those wrinkles and make the character a little bit more interesting. Uh, muchas gracias a todos. Uh, muchas gracias, Miguelowski. Sí, de negro me gustó. La verdad es que me está costando trabajo, pero creo que voy a irme con el negro. Mm, gracias a todos los que estuvieron aquí en el streaming. Nos estamos viendo el próximo jueves. Y... Ah, sí, en la parte de arriba está mi social media, mi art station, Instagram, Facebook. Entonces... Pues estamos en contacto, cualquier cosa, ya saben, me pueden buscar en Face. Nos vemos el próximo jueves.
y buenas noches.